Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Technique Tuesday. So this week I'm gonna be recruiting the help of Matt Ogus to help demonstrate some of these exercises. We were both in California for the Natural Muscle Mayhem this year, and we decided we'd link up for this ab video. Now, before we get into the exercises themselves, I think it's important to keep in mind that while the abs will be built in the gym, they're revealed in the kitchen, meaning without a sufficiently low body fat percentage, doesn't really matter how well you train your abs, your six pack probably isn't gonna look its best. Now, generally speaking, somewhere in the eight to 12% body fat zone for men and 14 to 18% body fat zone for women is gonna be necessary to reveal that six pack. So in a previous Technique Tuesday video, I covered isometric exercises for training the core, such as the plank. Uh, so in this video, Ogus and I are gonna show our top three exercises for developing the six pack, or the rectus abdominis itself. So the primary function of the rectus abdominis is lumbar flexion, basically rounding the lower back. So to train the six pack optimally, we wanna include exercises that are gonna take the lumbar spine through a full flexion range of motion. And while weighted spinal flexion movements like crunches have been criticized as being risky, an evidence-based examination of spinal flexion from Dr. Brett Contreras and Dr. Schoenfeld argues that it's premature to say that dynamic flexion exercises like crunches are injurious in healthy individuals. And I've discussed why I think crunches are safe to perform in another video, which I'll link down below. Now, according to EMG data from Bohek, Barons, and Buskies, you can see that while both crunches and hanging leg raises are both effective for targeting the full six pack, hanging leg raises do target the lower abs a bit more, while crunches target the upper abs a bit more. So as a general rule, to hit all three rows of the six pack, you wanna include both an exercise where you're bringing your upper torso down toward your midline, like a crunch, and an exercise where you're bringing your lower limbs up toward your torso, like a leg raise. Okay, so the first exercise is the weighted crunch. You can do this on a machine or by using a rope attachment on a cable setup. And you wanna grab the rope with your pinkies up against the handles and pull the rope back behind your head as you kneel down. And before initiating the crunch, you wanna squeeze your glutes to position your hips in posterior pelvic tilt, which is gonna help the abs get engaged over the hip flexors. Initiate the movement by thinking about crunching the rope both down and in. Only crunching the straight down might cause the hip flexors to take over more. And crunching in is gonna force your lower back to round, which is a good thing. This is exactly the movement that the abs are responsible for performing. Your upper back can stay more or less fixed. At least there's no need to intentionally curl your upper back since the abs won't contribute to thoracic flexion as much as lumbar flexion. And you can tuck your chin down if you find it helps you focus on flexing your spine better. However, the main thing you want to avoid is jerking your head up and down throughout the range of motion. So you wanna crunch until you feel a strong contraction along the entire length of your six pack, and then reverse the motion by allowing your lower back to straighten out. At the top of each rep, you should reach full spinal extension so you can take each and every crunch through a proper full range of motion. Now in general, I like to load the crunch in a more moderate to light rep zone, something around 12 to 20 reps reps since loading lumbar flexion heavily may still present a spinal risk. So while many athletes are able to do it without issue, just to play it safe, I think it's better to avoid really heavy loading on the crunch, in my opinion. Now, one of the most common errors that I see with the crunch is pulling the rope or machine down with your arms. To help combat this, you wanna take a more loose grip on the handles and think about your arms only as connectors with your abs doing all of the work. It's also really common to see people only flex their upper back while their lower back stays completely neutral. And this is a natural tendency for lifters because it's generally good lifting advice to keep a neutral lower back. However, the abs are an exception to this rule since one of their primary functions is to round the lower back. Okay, up next is the hanging leg raise. Now for the hanging leg raise, you want to hang from a pull-up bar with a roughly 1.5 times shoulder width grip. If you find your grip to be a limiting factor, you can use straps, which might help improve the mind-muscle connection with the abs by limiting fatigue of the forearms. From here, initiate the leg raise by rolling your hips forward and up as your knees swing up toward your chest or armpit area. And again, you wanna think about crunching your lower abs and your upper abs together rather than simply thinking about lifting your legs up which is most likely gonna cause the hip flexors to take over. Once your knees reach the top position, reverse the range of motion by lowering your legs back down under control. And if you focus on using your abs to control the movement rather than generating momentum by rocking your torso back and forth, your hips should stay pretty well stable and locked into position when viewed from the side. And since this is actually a pretty tough exercise when executed properly and with good control, I generally perform it with body weight for six to 15 reps 
depending on the abdominal strength of the trainee. Now, one of the most common errors that I see here is simply allowing the knees to bend up without any hip curl component. While the bent knee leg raise can be a decent progression before going into the more straight leg variation, you still need to focus on rolling the hips forward and up not just simply lifting the knees up. Just lifting the knees up without rolling the hips or crunching the abs is simply gonna target the hip flexors and be way too easy past a rank beginner's strength level. Another very common error is using too much momentum, allowing the torso to swing backward and forward. Rather than cheating your way up by swinging, initiate the leg raise by contracting your abs from a dead hang. If you can't do a raise without swinging, you may not have developed enough ab strength yet. So you can start by using a Roman chair, which is gonna prevent momentum, or you can start with decline reverse curls, also known as dragon flags, where you grab onto a handle, balance your weight on your upper back and shoulders, and swing your legs up as you crunch your abs at the top, and then allow your abs to control the negative as you lower your legs back down under control. All right, the third rectus abdominis exercise we're gonna cover here is the bicycle crunch. And I really like this variation because it not only trains the rectus abdominis through spinal flexion, but it also gets the obliques involved through spinal rotation. So here you wanna lie on the floor, place your hands behind your head, but don't actually grab your head, and bring your left elbow to your right knee by twisting your torso while crunching your abs. Alternate sides back and forth so that the leg movement looks as if you're pedaling a bicycle. However, keep in mind that just like with the hanging leg raise, the simple act of bending your knee doesn't do anything for the abs. So you wanna focus on mindfully crunching and twisting with the six pack rather than simply just going through the motions passively. Now, unlike the weighted crunch and the leg raise, the bicycle crunch is generally performed with a faster, more explosive tempo. So I'll generally program it for something around 15 to 20 reps. Now the most common error with the bicycle crunch that I see is just moving your arms to touch the knee rather than actually crunching with your abs. So your arms should be locked into position and the elbow to knee contact should be created entirely from spinal flexion and rotation. And guys, that is all that I have for this one. I wanna give a shout out to Matt for helping me out with the demonstrations on this video, and I'll have his channel and his Instagram linked down below. And make sure you guys check out my latest ab technique video, which focused on the plank and the ab wheel rollout. Don't forget to like the video if you found it to be helpful. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.